Hey, what's up, Pizza Over Nerd here. Keep in mind that the audio quality of this video will be pretty bad because uh, I distro hopped and then I accidentally used my webcam's mic and I forgot to set up a noise gate, so it's gonna be super bad quality for the audio. Sorry about that. What's up, Pizza Over Nerd here. Recently, I started a series called Alternative Ways to Install Arch. In the first episode, which was last episode, I showed you how to use AUI to install Arch. However, today I'm going to be showing you how to use ArchFi to install Arch, as well as ArchD. Anyways, I'm going to stop talking and let's get with the video. Okay, so once you boot into Arch Linux, we are going to want to type wget and then archfi.sf for searchforge.net slash archfi. And this will download ArtFi. So now we can just type sh ArtFi and it will open it up. So now uh, for our language, set it to your language. I'm gonna do English. For your keyboard layout, set it to uh, whichever keyboard layout you use. And let me say, I do like this uh, menu layout much better than I like the number layout from AUI. Now for our editor, we'll select Nano. And for our disk partitions, you can do either do it manually. Um, or you can go to auto partitions. So, so you would use DOS for uh, legacy and uh, BIOS, and then you'd use GPT for EFI and UEFI. So I'm gonna use DOS. Now uh, you will select your hard drive. Mine is VDA. I don't know why it's VDA instead of SDA. So anyways, hit continue. And now it will format your hard drive. After that, hit tab, tab, then hit back or enter. And now select select partitions and install. So for root device, we'll do uh, VDA1. Swap, we'll do VDA2. Root, we'll do VDA3. And then home, we'll do none, which is all the defaults. So uh, yeah, you can just spam enter for that. And then hit yes, format, yes. And then uh, select your partition for boot. Uh, I'm gonna recommend ext4. Then for swap, select swap. And then for root, select ext4 again. Now if you chose to do home, make sure to do uh, home to be the same as root. Now we're going to mount to install slash config. And let's first edit our mirror lists, because if you don't edit your mirror lists, then it's going to be as slow as a week in prison. So basically just remove all of them that are not your country. Pro tip, when editing a mirror list, uh, if you use Control k it will erase an entire line. So this makes uh, editing mirror lists much easier. It's just don't press it too many times or you might skip a mirror that is from your country on accident. Once you finish editing your mirror list, if you decide to edit, hit Control o then Control x And now we're going to click or uh, hit navigate to install Arch Linux and then hit enter. Alright, so uh, once the base system's done installing, uh, go to configure arch, and first we're going to choose the host name. So uh, to do that, just uh, go to host name and then type whatever you want your host name to be. Uh, although, there, keep in mind there are limitations for host names, like I don't think they can be capital and they can't end or start with a dash. So I'm going to do arch by box, because I'm running this in GNOME boxes. <laughs> So uh, now we'll set our keyboard layout on US. Now you can choose a font if you want. Uh, you don't have to though. However, if you see a font that you do want that you find pretty crisp, you can choose one. But anyways, now we're gonna go to locale and you're going to choose your locale. So for example, if you're, uh, if you're in the US, you would choose ENUS for English US or uh, if, you're, if you are in uh, Great Britain, you would choose ENGB for English Great Britain or ENCA for Canada. Or if you speak Spanish, you could go to, uh, I think, ESMX for Mexican Spanish. So, yeah, I'm just going to do ENUS. And now it will generate the locales. Once that's done, you're going to want to set your time zone. So. Uh, just go to what you would normally set your time zone on pretty much any Ubuntu based distro. For me, it's uh, America, Los Angeles. And then uh, for our, you, you do want to use UTC as your hardware clock, unless, however, you're dual booting with Windows. 
In that case, then keep using local time. Now we're going to set our root password. I'm going to set my password to uh, anyways. There we go. Now uh, we're going to go to generate fstab and uh, you can, I recommend either UUID or label. I'm going to do label. And now for our bootloader, we'll set it to either grub or syslinux. I'm going to do grub. So then hit install grub and it will download grub onto the arch ISO. Once that's done, uh, it, it will generate a grub config file. Then we're going to run install bootloader with grub install. And now it will install your bootloader. Okay, so once that's done, uh, you can go to OK, or I mean back, not OK, and then uh, do enable DHCP, C, yeah, DHPCD, and then hit yes, and now we're going to navigate to ArchDie, so we'll need to install some dependencies, and now it will say install and run ArchDie, we're going to install and run it, and it will ask whether GitHub or SourceForge, I recommend SourceForge, it's faster. SourceForge sometimes is even faster than torrents for me. Anyways, now we're going to go to updates and you can install Pac-Man Contrib if you want. Once that's done, I recommend installing an AUR helper. I wouldn't recommend Yayort, but I recommend Yay or Trizen. I, I like Yay. So uh, then we'll just install Yay pretty quickly. So once your AUR helper is down, I would also recommend installing Downgrade, so that if your Arch system uh, fails from a bad package upgrade, you can downgrade it back to the old version. So I would highly recommend Downgrade to be installed. Anyways, once you're done with that, go to Back, and now we're going to go to Install. And from here, we're going to install all of our stuff. So if you need any console tools, you can go to Console and get tools from here. Although uh, they have generic tools, impression tools, uh, network tools, and uh, web browsers, as well as recovery tools. So that's pretty cool. Then you can go to system, they have, and we're going to select our kernel, and we will install kernel headers and docs. Now, the normal kernel is already installed, however, you still need to install docs and headers, so yeah. Now, once that's done, uh, we can head over to services and we can download different things we might need. I don't really need anything because this is a VM. Now uh, you can go to file system and download file system tools. You could go to sound and get sound stuff. Now if you're on a desktop and you like music, I recommend Pulse Audio Equalizer. It's super good. And if you are printing stuff a lot, then install some packages from print. So yeah. Now for Xorg, uh, you're going to you can check your GPU infos here, which is pretty cool. And uh, you're going to want to go to install, and uh, you can install whatever, but uh, you have to install server and X in it. Please, just please do it. It will save you a lot of hassle. So uh, once you select that, hit OK and hit uh, Y. Okay, once Xorg is done, uh, if you have any input problems, you can go to input drivers, and uh, if you have any, if you have a video card, specifically an NVIDIA one, or you're using VirtualBox, then uh, I would recommend uh, installing NVIDIA proprietary drivers. However, uh, if you don't have any of those, I'd recommend installing uh, whichever video drivers you do use. So for example, NVIDIA, uh, you would use Novell, that's, that's not how you pronounce it. <laughs> Or AMD, you would use, I think, ATI. Or, no, AMD. And then, uh, I don't know why I said ATI. And then Intel, you'd use Intel. So, yeah. Do install drivers. 
then we'll install desktop. Now the only ones that are officially supported are Mate, Cinnamon, and Plasma. However, uh, uh, XFCE, GNOME, LXDE, LXDE, GDK3, LXQT, Enlightened, Mint, Openbox and Deepin are all still supported by this, so you can install them. Now in the menu, actually, it will let you select what you want from each group. So let's say you don't want, uh, for some reason you don't want the notes plugin, then you can get rid of that. And you can install extra stuff too, by default, like Network Manager, Appboy, and GD in uh, LightDM. So, so uh, once you've selected your stuff, you just, uh, go to OK, and then wait, OK, and then OK, here we go. And now it will install all of the complementaries, so then you can go to XFCE4 and XFCE4 goodies. So it is a bit of a pain that you have to install each of them by itself, but whatever, it's OK. OK, so once LightDM is done installing, it will ask if you'd like to install it, and you'd say yes. Now we'll install XFCE4 goodies. And finally, we're going to install just the XFCE4 group itself. Now, I did do this in reverse order, so if you want, you could do it in the other order. However, it doesn't really matter what order you install them in. And now we are done installing XFCE. So then we could go back, and now if... I know you, we did install it DM earlier, however, if you disabled it, you can choose another display manager here. And now we can go to Applications and configure applications. So, uh... We got a bunch of office suites, internet stuff. Uh, however, I'm not going to install anything because this is a just a virtual machine and not my main computer. So yeah, now we will go to config, and uh, you don't have to config configure uh, bash, um, your firewall, or or systemd or xorg. However, you can. I would recommend going into accounts and adding a user, and then. Uh, Enter in your new password. Then going to sudoers and adding that user to the sudo group. So, whoops. Um, so now we can go back. Now you can also configure your boot and stuff if you want, but really accounts is the most important. Now we'll go back and then exit. And now we'll go OK. Uh, whoops. We'll go back, then back, then unmount then reboot. Okay, so now as you can see, we got a nice crisp Arch install going on here. So, uh, pretty nice. Pretty easy to do. Uh, this one's even easier than AEY, which is pretty cool. Anyways, thank you for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one.